Okay, I think we've done a pretty good job with this little uh, African dog habitat. African wild dog, I should say. They are wilds. They're not domestic dogs. Look at them. They're basically like hyenas, aren't they? They look so cool. I don't actually know really the difference between them. There must be a, a very similar species, like, um, genetically, because they look so similar. Oh, we've got some guests coming around. Oh, you know something we missed, actually, is we didn't put any donation bins in. That is a fatal error on my behalf. Right, let's, let's duplicate this here. Let's put one basically everywhere we're going to have guests. I, I can't believe I forgot education too. I'm going to whack education in probably on this side. Um, I want them to be able to throw food in. And this is probably the best area for it. In fact, we could even have um, a seating area over here. Oh no, pause. Don't inbreed. That doesn't look like you're about to mate. That looks very aggressive. Um, I'm going to say Rosie, gone contraceptive, large Larry, you dirty fiend. R poor Rosie is fending him off. Um, how can we sort this out? Let's have a think. So we've got Rosie as our female. We probably, are they all related? Let's have a look at the other females. Um, if you go into genetics on the right hand side, actually no, it's in the, the stud book, you can see who the parents are. So they're all going to be siblings, aren't they? Ah, uh, see, this is a problem. We're going to need someone who's not part of the gene pool. And at the minute we have two of each, I think. Two males, two females. Oh, four females and three males. Okay, I'm going to suggest that all the males, uh, Large Larry, Roberto and Fernando, um, are released into the wild and then we buy ourselves a new male to be the uh, the stud of this habitat. Let's go, uh, what are they called? Giant otters. Have we got any affordable? Oh, we do. Perfect. Felipe, welcome to the zoo. In fact, let's give you a new name. Let, let's send, let's first send him to quarantine. And then when he goes into the zoo, we'll, uh, we'll give him a new name. Um, because we need to start renaming these animals. I need to actually get on with naming them. I kind of want to see how this plays out as well. Are they going to, uh, are they going to fight? Oh no. Oh, it was, it was playful. Okay. No, I'm putting it into this right now. Okay. This is not okay. It's very cute, but it's not okay when you consider that they're, they're siblings. Um, you two and Large Larry, you're all going to get released. Wow. Look how many conservation credits. Wow. That's amazing. Okay. 234. There he goes. Now you're just, Ooh, interesting. Okay. Just a bit of levitation and you're back to normal. There we go. No babies for you. Let's hope. No, that's good. We've also got a uh, reward. Let's claim that. High amounts of litter. Oh no, this isn't good. Oh wow, there really is. I think we've got bins everywhere. So it's probably just because we've massively overloaded our staff. Um, I, I've got loads of keepers in the last episode. I'm going to train them up. Um, a little bit overkill on the keepers, but I'd rather be overkill than under. Um, I don't know what the opposite of, of overkill is, because I'm sure it's not underkill. Uh, underprepared. I'd rather our animals have the best uh, that we have to offer. Uh, we've only got two caretakers, and they are so cheap. Um, we could really be paying them more. Um, you can actually just pay them more, and it will improve their happiness, but they honestly love their job. They say they're doing efficiently, though. Um, I'm a bit confused, because this doesn't look very efficient to me. And there are bins literally everywhere. They're just overflowing. So I'm going to, I kind of think we need another caretaker. I'm going to put one more in right in the hot spot of where it's going wrong. And then let's put you on zoo. And you can start clearing up this mess. Uh, and they also think that the tickets are underpriced. I'm going to just make this 30 and 15. I have lost all concept of how much this zoo should be valued at, like what tickets should be. But I think $30 is getting up there now. Like if I had to pay $30 to get in, I'd expect a pretty good zoo. And at the minute, we've only got this many, this much going on. I think 
I'd, I'd want at least the whole Africa section to be done in real life. Um, cause we're planning on doing a whole Africa section and then we're gonna have our Asia, Asia section over here. Uh, and then we can get all the endangered animals in. Uh, but yeah, I'll, we'll leave it how it is. Let's see, let's see. We can always earn more money and I'm happy to charge the earth <laughs> for this, uh, for this zoo if guests are willing to pay it. Uh, let's get back to our education though. So I'm gonna put a new, <gasps> Oh, every time, every time I, I start to do something. Yes! Please have more babies, you adorable things. Look at them go. Look how cute they are. Oh, not, not, oh, expecting offspring. Yes, officially, they've officially mated. Before, I tell you what, before we add any more animals into the habitat, uh, into their habitats, I'm gonna put, is quarantine, have you, you haven't passed quarantine yet because I've been paused the whole time, probably. Um, I'm going to go through and just rename a few of the animals that we've got that haven't been named yet, because at the minute, I don't even know who this female is because it's one of the new ones, and I feel like everyone needs a good name. So first up on the name train, we have Bridget, the now pregnant giraffe. We also have Ophelia, which is a very cute name. I've noticed that now we've got two um, males in this habitat, the Nile Lechwe slash uh, reticulated giraffe habitat. So we're gonna have to release this one into the wild too because it's only supposed to be one male and then up to 49 females. So ap apologies, Wakesa. Uh, enjoy your time in the wild. This little Nile Lechwe playing around is going to be Cupcake and her sleepy little sister is going to be Sugar. And the other sleepy sister is going to be called Muffin. And the last Nile Lechwe that we haven't named is going to be Shakira. Because look at those hips move. <laughs> now we need to name our baby penguins as well. So we're going to have Waddles, Dragon Fruit, Pancakes, Yule, as we're getting in the spirit now, Zimaria, Pingu, and carrying on our Madagascar theme, we're gonna have Skipper, Kowalski, Rico, and Private. And then we're gonna have Snow, Oliver, Scamp, Tanner, Speedy, who's living up to their name, Bob, you gotta have a Bob. And then we're gonna go Treacle, Fudge, and Fat Gus to, <laughs> to round us off. Wow, okay, we just named a lot of baby penguins. Um, we got a, another reward for breeding. Oh, our quarantine's passed on our otter. Let's move them into the otter habitat. And then I think we've got another reward. Ah, we've got some, some research complete. Perfect, the Akapi research is going well. We'll leave them on that. And our mechanic research is plowing through barriers. I'm gonna leave them to continue doing barriers because I wanna get to one-way glass and then some of our more shy animals uh, will just have an easier time. They're not gonna get stressed. Like particularly the null lich, we get a little bit stressed when they uh, when they eat in front of guests. So it'll be absolutely fine. Because we had so many penguins though, I think we've reached the capacity that we kind of wanted to be at. So I'm gonna put all of the boys on uh, contraceptive now because we don't want any more penguin babies. Okay, I've just put all of the male penguins on contraceptives because at the minute we have 20 babies and 30 penguins overall. So we've got five adult males, five adult females and uh, 20 babies. And we said we were going to get to 30 and I think 30 is a good number to stop at. Otherwise, this, this habitat is going to get a little bit out of control. We could take it way beyond this because they live in groups of up to 500, which is absolutely crazy. Um, and maybe we'll take them off in the future, but I just want to let these babies grow up. And uh, yeah, we can always take them off if the numbers start to decline or something. But I think we... I think we're probably okay as it is. Uh, 30 seems quite a lot of penguins. And I think this is the perfect time to put some more education in our African wild dog habitat. So I'm gonna add an education point right there, uh, a talk point. I'm gonna put set it to the African wild dog. They can throw food in, which is what I really wanted. So they're gonna throw it around here, which is awesome. Um, and I think I might put some seating in. We've already got some seating over here. So I'm just gonna duplicate that with control D and then we can add some seating over here.
and then just move this torque point very slightly to the middle. There we go. Can you still throw food? They can. Now all we need to do is get an educator for this section of the zoo. I don't know if we've got an educator over here for the Akapi. We don't. We don't have one. Okay, so I'm going to put one in over here as well. Let's add a torque point there. Um, this might create a bit of congestion with this path here, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. And we can always move this access way. It's just for our uh, facilities anyway. And this is all going to get revamped later. So I don't really mind doing that now. Um, look at our little area. No one's over here. We need to pull people this way. <laughs> need to get some more animals. Um, that is the focus of today's episode, which we will get round to in just a second, which is putting some beautiful lemurs in this habitat area we have right here. Uh, but for now, I think if we set up this, so they're going to start in, let's start them in, let's start them in March. March is fine. Okay, we need to get a new educator. So first off, we need a new work zone. And this is going to be for here. In fact, I'm going to delete this on work zone 8. I'm just going to take our Africa middle work zone and add these uh, education points into it. And then we can just assign the educators to the same work zone as the uh, the keepers and it just makes it nice and simple. So I'm going to add those in there. I've noticed we've got quite a few outside of the zoo work zone, quite a few power points. So I'm just going to add those in so our mechanics can go and fix them if they have any problems. I think that's a little bit of a, of upkeep I didn't do in the last episode. And add these in as well. Add these education, the talk points in. So now we've got a whole new section there. Let's get a new educator going to drop them in here and it's November so we'll have a talk in a bit um, we're going to need a new name for this one it looks very similar to Steve Irwin that we had before but with slightly grayer hair <laughs> oh we got our first dogs mating oh they're beautiful colors look at the difference We've got like a much more brownie and a much gray one it's gonna be beautiful babies did it, did it work it was very quick yes it did very nice. We need some names for these uh, African dogs. Please do put some names in the comments. I love renaming the animals and I know you guys love suggesting names. So please continue to do that. It's been really fun so far. I think now we're at the point in the episode where we can get the animals for this. Um, I'm going to look for Lima. We've got black and white rough Lima. And I believe all types of the Limas are endangered. Let's just have a look. Black and white... Black and white rough lemurs are critically endangered, so they're definitely coming in the zoo. We've got the red rough lemur is critically endangered, and the ring-tailed lemur is endangered. So, you know, all of them are in serious need of conservation. Um, less so the ring-tailed, but you can't have lemurs without having King Julian. Uh, so we're going to get some black and white rough lemurs, uh, some red rough lemurs and some ring-tailed lemurs and put them all in the same habitats because I believe they can all share. Yes, they can. They can all share habitats together because they are friendly and gorgeous and just the best animals. Um, I'm going to... We need two. I think we need at least two. I'm going to get this one and... Oh, I don't want this one because it's got no fertility. We want them to breed. I'm going to get these two. What groups do they need to live in? So let's go for the... Uh, lima. I think it's the black and white rough lima. They need 2 to 16. So we could just get two of each type if we needed to. Um, and then that would probably be okay. Uh, let's 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 have a look and see if we can get any more um, if we refresh the list. Ah, there are many more. Okay, these are just a bit cheaper. Got some more males. These are, they're getting quite expensive. So I'm going to go through and get the red rough lemas next. And if we can get at least two of each, that's perfect. That's a decent female, quite cheap. Then these are really good. Um, I've got zero immunity, but other than that, isn't too bad. Uh, 85. Yeah, I think we can stretch to 85. Let's get a good male there. Um, are there any more females? Size, I don't mind. Okay, so let's go for that one. And then let's sort by appeal again. I should have done that before to find the best ones. Um... I'm assuming that's in reverse order. Uh, 1875 versus 19. Okay, so these are the best. Uh, 36, that's pretty good. Let's get you. Okay, and then ring-tailed lemurs. 
Ah, oh, we can buy them with cash. Much easier. <laughs> I've only got males. Oh, there's an albino one there. Albino? Albino? I don't know how you say it. We don't have the conservation credits for it, but look at that. That's very weird. <laughs> um, let's get let's get two males just so we're ready to get some females uh, when they come in. I'm tempted to go for... They've got very similar values. I'm going to go for this one because it is good on fertility. And fertility is the main thing I'm really looking for here. Like, we want to make sure they're breeding. Let's refresh. No. Okay. So at least we've got breeding pairs so far. Let's let's maybe go back and have a look at the, the black and white ruffed. I want to make sure we've got as many as we can get. Ah, oh, no. She's got zero fertility. Are there any more? No, that's it. Okay. We've got some lemurs now. We've got enough. Let's send all of them to storage. To quarantine, not to storage. <laughs> that's not something you do with animals. <laughs> okay. So they're going to quarantine. So they're going to take them out of the animal trade center, move them to storage. Uh, why do I keep saying storage? Move them to quarantine. So they're going to check if they've got any diseases or anything. It's just started to rain. So that's amazing. That's going to be really nice for our guests. And I think the special thing about lemurs is that the guests can enter the habitat, which I love. I love it when animals let you enter the habitat. I do think, so th these are neutral. Um, I'm going to go through them and check that they're all actually okay with it because I don't want them to be particularly shy. No, it says they're neutral, but I know if they're neutral, they can get stressed sometimes. So you've got to kind of, you've got to see how it how it goes. Start for having to queue for which facility? Oh, that's fine. That's, oh, we don't need a bigger quarantine. <laughs> Happy for them to queue for that. Um, I think we've got our keeper door over here. We do. So they need to go all the way around probably, or apparently this isn't the quickest route. Um, I'm going to put a guest gate in that they can walk through though. So I'm going to pause the game. I'm going to play the game actually because we want our lemurs to come through. I'm going to have to edit this barrier though. Okay, I've just added the guest gates in and I've had a thought as... Oh no, Scoop's got low welfare. Oh, it's stressed. This is why we need our barrier research. So it's okay. It'll be absolutely fine. We'll get the um, we'll get the barrier research done soon. We're plowing through our vet research. We've got more on the African penguins. I think they're probably okay. They have quite a lot of uh, enrichment as it is already. So I'm going to move Dr. Doolittle onto the African wild dogs because I want to make sure that they've got enough. And then I think... I, I do want more for our giraffes because they don't really have a lot as it stands. Oh, we've got four of our lemurs are past quarantine. I'm going to wait till they're all past quarantine and then just move them all at the same time. Uh, the only problem is, which I've just thought, is that I believe they can climb. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they need grade one climb proof, more than 1.25 meters, and they need all water that's more than three meters wide and one meters deep. So they can't swim, um, or they can't swim very well. So I'm going to pause the game so we don't keep getting alerts. So we, what you could do is just have water separating them from the, the guests. What I'm going to do is probably use glass because it's resistance grade three, which is way more than they need, which is one, and it's not climbable, whereas wooden logs are climbable. Um, so I'm going to just stretch this out to here and make these all glass. Okay, so I've just played around and raised the barriers and lowered the barriers so that we, you know, we have it come down around here, but then uh, it's raised up around the door so it doesn't look too odd. Um, and then I'm going to just put a little path through the habitat. And again, I think I'm going to use this natural path that has the little fence on it because I really like this little fence. It's very cute. And I'm just going to make a little path through the habitat that our guests can walk through. Okay, I've kind of made like a bit of a flowy path through, just a very basic one. Um, I don't want to make it too complex. I actually want to leave a lot of the space open because I know that lemurs can get stressed sometimes and I want them to be able to uh, to escape if they need to um, from the area. They can also climb over the path and I'm going to build bridges over so I'm not too worried about dividing this habitat in two, which is sometimes a concern if you put a guest gate at two ends, which is why I've, uh, I've put them at two ends in this case. So guests can completely walk past the habitat if they don't want to go in. Um, 
or if they have accessibility issues and they don't want to go through a, a habitat with lemurs and it's, it's going to be stressful or something it's absolutely fine they can just walk past the habitat um, but if they do want to go in they can go through this lovely little windy route um, that we've put in for them and it does take them quite close to this barrier's edge. I might just move this very slightly over so that we can have some trees or something and make it a bit nicer rather than being up against the wooden posts. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with the shape. There we go, I think that's a little bit better. And it stopped raining, which is great. Okay, let's get all of our lemurs in here. Let's select all of them. They're all past quarantine. Let's move you into habitat 34, or as it shall now be known, lemurs <laughs> uh, we also need to add uh, lemurs to the work zone i don't think we've done that already so let's select work zone africa middle oh we have we've already added it that's perfect um in that case we can start doing things like oh quarantine's full that's okay we're moving them out you can see the number start to drop on there um, they're gonna just take them out and put them into this habitat <gasps> we've had babies <gasps> we've had puppies this an adult? No, they're, oh my goodness, there's three puppies. How cute are these? They're so adorable. They're little, they're little squeals. The little whines are adorable. Oh, following their mum. Very, very cute. Ooh, our mechanic research is complete. Wow, we're getting more barriers by the second. This is great. I'll leave them to carry on. The only concern I have about having glass barriers is they're quite weak, but I think it's going to be fine in this instance. I just need to make sure that, yeah, it's 1.9 meters on this side. So it just needs to be above 1.25, I think. Yeah, they're not they're not especially adept at climbing glass. We need to be careful with our trees, though, that you don't have the trees overhanging the uh, the path, because if you do and they're climbable, um, particularly climbable trees, they'll just climb out of them and drop onto the path and uh, terrorize your guests. Here we are. Or our lemurs are being are arriving. Oh, there's some long grass here. I'm going to quickly just go on to terrain and uh, re-terrain this before it gets too crazy. And then we can uh, we can have a look at them all. Oh, and the, the lemurs can run through the path, so I don't even have to worry about having walkways over. That's perfect. Look at them running around, having a great time. These are really cool. <gasps> wow, okay. They're good at jumping. That's how they're getting through. They're jumping over. Ooh, I do have... To, I have concerns about this side of the habitat now, though, because this is all climbable. I didn't think about that before. I'm just going to quickly add in another layer of habitat right here. Okay, so I have fixed the problem. I think that's what you were running towards, Valana, you cheeky little thing. Um, but we've uh, we've sorted it out now. Let's have a look at the others. Oh, it's all the red rough lemurs are in here now. Oh, we've got another reward as well. Adopt and place two different habitat species. We're doing so well with this. We have a ring-tailed lemur and it's the male. Well, there's no other name than King Julian for this guy. I didn't even mean to create a Madagascar Zoo. It's just kind of happened organically, but I absolutely love it and I have no regrets. Oh, the people are starting to come through here as well, which is amazing. I'm just going to pause though, because I don't want them to do anything like litter. So I'm going to put some recycling bins along here because I want to make sure that they're throwing away any rubbish that they're bringing in with them. And I'm also going to add in some donation bins. And now I'm going to add some of these do not disturb signs so that people are quiet and are aware that they need to be respectful of the animals while they're in here. I'm going to go on the heat maps and click on security, I believe it is. And then I can show do not disturb signs. Okay, the coverage of this is good. We probably just need one more uh, at the entrance here. There we go. 
We could also have some do not feed signs because that is also very important. Um, I don't want it to become too much of a, you're not allowed to do this, but at the same time, we need them to be respectful of the animals. So I'm just gonna put them as double signs everywhere. There we go. Now our guests know you're not allowed. Oh, those people just blipped out. <laughs> uh, now our guests know you're not allowed to feed them and please be respectful and quiet of the animals. So hopefully the animals will be a lot less shy in here, our little lemurs. Um, they need a lot more climbable area, but we can sort that out. That's absolutely fine. And they need more plant coverage and they need it from Africa tropical, which is really cool. Um, I think it's similar on the Akapi habitat and I love these plants. So I'm gonna have a really good time decorating this one. Um, we've got low welfare at the minute. I don't know why that is. It's the social group. We need, we need more adults, that's absolutely fine. Let me just check again. I believe all of them need two. Uh, if we do need more, we can always get more uh, animals. Oh, it's 3 to 30 for the ringtail lemur. So we have to be careful um, that we've actually got enough. Okay, it's just the uh, the black and white rough lemur that needs two. All the others need three. So the red rough lemurs are absolutely fine. But we need to get some more ring-tailed lemurs. We can see we've got a really good male here. Um, I'm going to get this going to get this male while we can. Um, I can't see a good female that we can afford right now. Um, I can maybe refresh the list. Uh, but no, I don't think they're coming in. So we'll have to just keep our eyes open for another one and move this ring-tailed lemur into quarantine and then put them into the habitat. Also realize that we've got our new male otter in here, Felipe. He's having a great time. Gonna need a new name for him. Uh, we had uh, Big Tony and then Large Larry, I believe. So maybe we need another Big something <laughs> or something like that. Uh, please do suggest in the comments what you want him to be called. He's having a great time though at the minute and we can get some proper breeding going on again. I'm gonna take the females off of uh, contraceptives because they don't have to be on them anymore. Ooh, and we've got our black and white rough lemurs in as well. Look at these guys. How cool are they? Wow, these are probably my favorite. They look so fluffy and cuddly. Look at them, adorable. Guests think tickets are underpriced. I'm gonna make it 34 and 16 or 18. 17. I can't do maths anymore. I think it's 17. Yeah. Oh no. Animal welfare has attracted protesters. What's wrong? They need more. They're fine. They, they're not amazing on space. But I think that's just because they haven't got any climbing yet. So it's just basically that we need to put the stuff in that I'm going to do now. So I'm going to put some nature in the habitat and then that will also give them climbing. But then I'll probably put some enrichment climbing in as well. Um, in fact, I'm going to start with enrichment climbing while it's easier to see. And then I'm going to add some nature into the habitat. Okay, so I built uh, one structure here that's kind of like a little walk along frame. And then we've got another structure that's kind of like a, a tree house type platform thing, which I think is a bit weird and a bit different. I think because there are so many climbable trees now uh, in the game, I'm gonna do the rest with just nature. So yeah, I'm gonna add some nature in now, checking in on what types they're like. It looks like 
they like African tropical plants. So these are going to be awesome. <laughs> Okay, I think I've done quite a lot of plants there. What I love is that we've got these beautiful cave rocks in, which are just the biggest trees um, in the game, I think. Unless maybe redwoods might be bigger, but they're absolutely massive. I just want to check that the dogs next door are going to be happy and none of the plants have kind of spilled into their territory. No, they haven't. That's good. Okay, and now we just need to check that the lemurs are all happy. Ah, so they're not happy. There's one, the bohab tree. This is what I wanted to check. Um, it just needs to move very slightly over here. And then we can just check it again. Yeah, that's gone now. Um, so they're all happy with their, their plants now. They're at 58% coverage. They probably need some hard shelter. They do because they've not got a lot with all of this. I think I might actually just build some into this rock area over here. Um, look at them. Look at them just climbing on the rocks. Oh, bit of a jump. They're so cute, but I wanted to build in these privacy areas with the rocks because whilst they're happy to be around humans, they do get a bit shy sometimes or that they're, they're neutral around humans, I think. So, oh, and this is what I was afraid of. Um, so let's uh, emergency capture this animal. Um, or can we... Oh, maybe it's because it's not officially landed. There we go. Emergency capture the animal. We need to check that they can't escape. And if they can, we need to make sure that they can't. So there is now a route here because of these rocks. I think we're quite lucky and that's it. Um, okay, that's not too bad. So we just need to make sure that these rocks are moved slightly further in so that they can't jump quite as far. Um, let's see if that works now. Oh, there's still some here because they can stand here. Let's just move this one in. Recalculating. They can't get out. I was worried whether they could climb the K-Pox and jump out, but I don't think they can. So I think we're all good on that front, which is great. So our animals can't escape. We only had one minor incident. Um, oh, we've got a reward as well. Breed exhibit species. Nice. We're doing that. And now they can run along the side, but they can't get out. That's what we want. And at some point, we'll probably have one-way glass here because it'll get them less stressed anyway. But for now, I think this is fine. And I believe that this is a, the feeding platform at the bottom here. So it's it's not just a normal one. This is where they're going to get fed. They've got their water here. It should be clean water. So they've got all their needs as far as that. They just need... I'm going to pause the game because a lot is happening. Um, they just need their shelter. So I think we're just going to whack a wooden shelter in as we've as we've done before. Oh, 
There we go. We've got a nice wooden shelter just built into these rocks here. And they've got some, some bedding in there. So I think that's everything they need on that front. Um, we've already got all our donation bins. Oh, here we go. So low welfare. So it could be due to stress. Space. Ooh, okay. Are they a bit stuck? If I trap them in? Yes, I have. So that's okay. I'm just going to box the animal. They now can't get down. And then I'm going to... Can we move it? Let's just move you over here in the habitat. Just launch him away. And now he's happy again. He's got lots of space, lots of climbing area. That's what we want. Uh, it means they can't get on top of here, but that's not a bad thing because we don't want them to jump out. So I'm not going to make it so that they can climb on here, especially. Um, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Uh, let the game run a bit. We've got our donation bins in here. We've got our normal bins. They're just walking around. We're telling people not to feed them and to be quiet. I think this is going quite well. Oh, look. There's a balloon. Look at that. They got these new uh, balloons. In and I think this is in the uh, one of the free updates. Um, they've added balloons, like animal balloons, which is awesome. Oh, look at them. They're using our, our platforms. Very cool, and they can climb down the tree. I did put a little ramp on this side as well. If they're feeling lazy, they can just they can just climb the lamp. Uh, the lamp, the ramp. Don't climb a lamp. They're a bit warm. Okay, so I think what we need to do now is we need to add some education because I don't think we have any uh, at this point. No, we don't. Um, we do need to get an educator to come. I think I'm just gonna. There's one here. I'm gonna grab one of these and put it over here maybe um, let's go there we're going to need some more power but that's fine there we go and now we can just link this seating up confirm the link and um, we want this to be on which one are we going to do Okay, so the ring-tailed lemur is the least, it's endangered, but the uh, the red rough lemur and the uh, black and white lemur are critically endangered. So they've got 29,000 is the lowest number we got there. Let's see how many of the black and white. 1,000. Okay, so we're going to do the black and white rough lemur because they're by far the most endangered animal. So it's the one that needs the most talking about, I think, for our zoo. Um, we need people to be donating to this. In fact, we have donation bins outside. We don't. Let's let's grab some of these donation bins and put them outside as well. Okay, lots of chances to donate now. <laughs> um, we've got our nice little seating area over here. I think we need to check the time that they're running. Um, let me just do that quickly. Ah, okay, so this one wasn't set correctly either. So we've got March for the uh, Akapi. Let's have this one in May, the African wild dogs. Otherwise, they'll be in two places at once. And then we can have this be May, June, July. We'll have them do the Lima talk in July. Or perhaps it makes a bit more sense for them to do this one in May, actually. Let's have you in May. And then you in July, African dogs. Because then they can just walk around, can't they? Um, makes a bit more sense. They start here. They come round, then they go back here, and then they can uh, come all the way back and have a bit of a rest or something. We'll give them a bit of a rest after uh, July. In fact, they could probably use both staff rooms. I'm just going to edit their work zone because that's quite close to there. Let's have Africa Middle be able to utilize this staff room as well um, because that is quite close. And maybe the Keeper Hut too, which I think is this building. Uh, yes, it is. So they got both keeper huts. They can use whichever they want. I think that just makes a bit more sense. And then we need to make sure that the zoo work zone now includes our solar panel. And make sure that our unassigned staff, I'm assuming this is the Africa middle keeper, uh, not keeper, educator. So now we've got Steve Owen on exhibits. Oh, we don't want our own zoo. Okay, Africa middle. We want uh, Lynette to be on the entrance one. So you've got the giant otters and birds tapir, taper. Um, so you've got these two habitats uh, in this first one. Then we've got uh, Africa middle, or Africa entrance we need, and Africa middle. So we actually need another educator. Because I believe we've got education points, we do. Let's hire a, a fourth educator. I'm aware that they could probably do more, but I'm not... 
I'm, I'm not especially worrying about it. I'm just going to train everyone up because uh, we do have a lot of money from this zoo currently. And it could be a little bit better spent, perhaps, but I'd rather the staff had less to do and make sure they did it right every time rather than trying to, like, maximally optimize everyone's time. Um, and once they're more trained up, then we can always rejig it later because they're going to be more capable of doing stuff when they're uh, when they're more important, uh, when they're better at their job. But I mean, we've only got one idle staff member at the minute, and that's really not bad. And it's vendors as well. And I'd rather the vendors be idle sometimes, but still always have like someone on the place to to look after it. Because uh, if you don't have anyone there, you're just losing money essentially because um, no one's selling anything. So let's have you on Africa entrance. So we've got Africa entrance, Africa middle, the actual entrance to the zoo, the first two habitats, and then exhibits. That's everyone. So everyone should be getting a nice education talk now. We've also had a quarantine passed on our ringtailed lima. So let's move them in to make sure that our lemurs aren't lonely. Perhaps we should have a look and see if there are any more. Um, oh, there are. Okay, let's get this. I don't mind them being small so much. Let's get this one. And then let's move them to the quarantine. I think we just need to check the numbers to check how many are in here. So we've got one of each on the black and white rough lemur. Then we've got two of each for the red rough lemur. And two males currently. So we actually need two females. Uh, assuming that they've put... Yes, they have put the box one back in. Oh, that, that was a red, luff, re, red rough lemur anyway, I think. So let's get another female. Let's get this one as well. And if I've miscounted, you can never have too many lemurs. So many albino animals, or al albino animals, I don't know how you say it. Uh, we can get more males. I'm going to go for a fairly cheap one. I'm going to go for this one, because I don't want to use our conservation uh, conservation credits too much on uh, on lemurs. Okay, and now I'm going to send you to quarantine. Got our mechanic research complete. Very nice, and carry on doing that. I'm just going to link this up. I'm going to change this later, so I don't mind leaving it like that uh, for now. And I think that's everything for this episode. If you've liked it, please give it a like. It really does help the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.